Oh, I just love it. People together in person, talking to each other, not getting quite enough of it. And thank you for going through our stringent testing regimes and vaccination regimes uh, to the extent possible, taking care of all of us. So what a, what a remarkable evening it's been thus far. Congratulations first to Italian Prime Minister Mario Draghi on receiving the Atlantic Council's highest honor. <laughs> Mr. Prime Minister, thank you for your leadership. Thank you to the Ukrainian people and President Zelensky for inspiring us with your bravery and resilience, reminding us not only that our freedoms are very fragile, but also that our freedoms are worth fighting and worth dying for. We saw, we saw in that remarkable video, which by the way President Zelensky produced for us yesterday and arrived at the Atlantic Council this morning, we saw in that remarkable video President Zelensky's extraordinary leadership skills in rallying his country. Most recently his leadership was evident in the successful efforts to rescue civilians from the Azovstal complex in Mariupol and his ongoing efforts to save the heroic fighters in Mariupol, which we should support energetically. Thank you, Ambassador Makarova, for accepting our first award for an entire people. First time we've ever done that. And you know, Ambassador, that the Atlantic Council doesn't just organize a dinner to honor the people, doesn't organize a dinner for the video of Zelensky, but through our Eurasia Center and John Herbs and Melinda Herring, through our... Well, you, you, they've been leading the charge since 2014 occupation of Crimea. Through our Digital Forensic Research Lab, through our Geoeconomic Center doing sanctions, just a forensic research lab fighting disinformation uh, and, and looking at sanctions. For our Skullcraft Center working on strategy and, and arms and what Ukraine needs, we pull the whole Atlantic Council together with the very aspects we have. Our Europe Center looking at the role of, uh, of the UK, of, of Germany, of France. So we are an organization that actually looks to, to, to shape the global future with our allies and partners. Thank you as well to Treasury Secretary Yellen, Speaker Pelosi, General Jones for your introductions. And brava to the Mel 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 <laughs> Metropolitan, it, it's written on my cards, Metropolitical Opera. Uh, it's the Metropolitan Opera soprano Maureen McKay, the Metropolitan Opera Prime Minister Draghi, the Metropolitan Opera gave her the night off to come to us in order to honor you with her beautiful singing. And as always, thanks to Luke Frazier and the American Pops Orchestra, and also the remarkable Robert Pullen. Most of all, thanks to all of you for gathering tonight as a community, a community of common cause. More than 500 of you from more than 25 countries, former heads of state, sitting cabinet members, members of Congress, CEOs and business executives, civil society, and media leaders, and performing artists. In another context, back in 1968, Dr. Martin Luther King at Washington's National Cathedral famously said, quote, the arc of human history is long, but it bends toward justice. It is the business of your Atlantic Council at this inflection point in history to bend that arc a little more rapidly, a little more sure, surely toward justice and freedom globally in concert with like-minded countries and individuals across the world. That has been our purpose uh, for 60 years and this is our 60th anniversary. Our mission has always been to shape the global future together with partners and allies. At this moment of Putin's ongoing war in Ukraine, premeditated, unprovoked, criminal, 
we face a historic challenge that is both an opportunity and a threat. As Prime Minister Draghi said, the opportunity is that by supporting Ukraine's survival as a democratic, sovereign, independent country, through the most impressive rallying of the transatlantic community and its global partners in my lifetime, we can also shape a more promising future globally and inclusive future globally. It could be a future where the sanctity of borders, human rights, individual freedoms, human progress, and rule of law triumph over the law of the jungle. In that spirit, I want to thank tonight's dinner co-chairs, uh, the co-chairs who are in attendance. Please stand as I call your names, but also I'd ask the audience to hold your applause. We're actually pretty happy to say it's a very long list. I think my finance chair, George Lund, is the happiest person in the room tonight. Uh, and it's one that provides us the wherewithal to do our work, so thank you so much for being here. Here are our co-chairs for the evening. Adrian Arscht, Airbus, I knew you wouldn't be able to hold your applause. Airbus representative by Jeff Diddle, Bank of America and Larry Dorita. Beretta represented by Francesco Valente and Stefano Itri. Ahmed Chirai, Chevron and Karen Knudsen. Edelman represented by Richard Edelman. Any represented by tonight's honorary honoree, Claudia Descalzi, who you'll hear from in a moment. Finn Cantieri, represented by Giampiero Masolo. Georgetown Entertainment, represented by Franco Nuschese. Goldman Sachs, represented by our board chairman, John F. W. Rogers. Baha Hariri, represented by Safi Kahlo. Hunt Consolidated, represented by Hunter Hunt. Kirkland Ellis, represented by Ivan Schlager. KNDS, represented by Robert Schultz and Ron Phillips. Cruel, represented by Alexander Mircheff. Leonardo, represented by Bill Lynn and Paolo Mesa. Lock Lockheed Martin, represented by James Takelet. Majid Al Futain, represented by Alain Bajani. Mapa and Mehmet Nazif, Nazif Dunal. Mercer, represented by Martine Ferlin. News Corp, represented by Almar Latour. One American Bank, represented by George Lund. Ahmet Oren. Penguin Random House, represented by Marcus Dola. I don't know, somehow he always gets the biggest round of applause right now. Raytheon Technologies, represented by Greg Hayes. SAIC and Nazik King. Squire Patton Boggs, represented by Ed Newberry. Textron, represented by Mary Claire Murphy. Tallis, represented by Alan Pellegrini. Clyde Tuggle. Grazie mille to all of you. Finally, I would just like to ask one other group to stand for your applause. And some of this group will, have been, will be standing for the second time. If I could ask all of the following to stand, the board directors and the International Advisory Board members of the Atlantic Council and all the members of the Atlantic Council's remarkable staff. If you could please stand. I am honored to work with all of you, best team in the world. Finally, and as I reflect on our incredible Atlantic Council community, we wish to salute three members of the Atlantic Council family who passed away recently. Peter Ackerman, Devere Pearson, and of course, Secretary Madeleine Albright. Peter served as an executive committee member of our board and chair of our personnel and Compensation Committee. He was a passionate fighter for freedom through our work with him in the Scowcroft Center and through his highly effective work on nonviolent civil resistance. Uh, there, are many, there are few people you can say this about, but I loved the work we did together, but most of all, I loved our disagreements. 
Uh, they were always intelligent and spirited debates. De Vere was one of those people whose contributions were more often felt than seen, whether as general counsel to President Lyndon Baines Johnson or as one of the most meaningful Atlantic Council board members in our 60-year history. He served on the board for 27 years, much of that time on the executive committee chairing our personnel and compensation committee during almost my entire time at the Atlantic Council. The tougher the challenge, the more effective was De Vere's always calm and wise response. We will miss both Peter and De Vere. 